Hi there, welcome to another uh, tutorial here on light wave and animation. Uh, this time we really are moving into animation, uh, moving on from our first tutorial. This time what we're going to do is we're going to load our uh, three light scene in and our object and we're going to do a quick animation with it just to show you the basics of the animation tools and how they work. Okay, first off we need a little explanation of what the animation tools are, most important of which is this here. The timeline. Now this uh, you see here numbered 1 to 60. This is the, the actual frames of the animation. This is where we will control it. This is where we will place our keyframes which dictate where the camera model must be at a certain time. And that's how we create our animation. We can select uh, how quickly we want this to move. Your normal uh, like TV something like 24 frames a second film uh, nearly 30. Uh, there's umpteen standards, uh, but we'll go with the basic say 30 frames of animation is pretty much one second. So we've got two seconds of animation here. Not a long time. Let's up that to uh, 10 seconds, 300 frames. That'll give us something to work with. Now what we want to do is actually load our scene. And you see that's defaulted to the 60 seconds. Let's change it to the 300. Okay, so you can see here my USS Vigilant model. Now what I've done here is uh, when I saved my three light scene for the, the Vigilant, I also added lots of the blinking lights, flashing lights, uh, engine lights, all the stuff to make the model look more realistic. I do this for pretty much every model I have that needs that kind of thing save a setup file with all the lights attached, everything set up, so you can just load the model from the scene and it's ready to rock right away. I don't have to sit here now and play around setting up lights and so forth. The model's ready to go with everything parented in place. Okay, so we have our model, the lights are set, the scene's set. I have a Starfield uh, model background in, in the background here. You can't see it because of the scale difference, but it is there. You cannot use a static picture in the background because uh, it'll blow the illusion entirely. You'll see that the background picture would stay exactly static while the model seemed to swing around in the centre. It would look very, very wrong. You have to use a model under most circumstances. So we have our model Starfield, we have our model spaceship, uh, we have a camera and we have 10 seconds of animation set here. So let's start. What we're going to do here is we're going to uh, copy ILM's technique here and move the camera and not the model, just to save a bit of uh, harassment here. We'll just move the camera and not the model. Well, it still look like there's motion though, if we do it correctly. So we get our camera, we press the T key, which is the shortcut for translation mode, so that we can move our camera. Uh, let's move it off to one side. We'll do a flyby, classic Star Trek flyby. Okay. So we move there, we press Y for translate mode, and we set uh, where we want our camera to start. Now we'll take this as our first keyframe. Okay, now when you're animating, the keyframes are very important. You just want to do the major points, basically. You don't want to set too many keyframes, or it gets very complex, strange things start happening. So just set your primary key points first, and then work from there. So we've done our start keyframe, let's move to our end keyframe. Let's move to frame 300 of the animation. Now nothing moved because we have moved nothing. Let's move the camera. Uh, we will spin it this way and we will move to the end point of the animation. Let's add a little upwards movement as well just for fun. So that is automatically keyframed as you can see here. Auto key is turned on. This has automatically keyframed this now as frame 300 of the animation. If I move this back now, as you can see, we now have an animation. You can control the forward and back movement here to see it actually play at 30 frames a second. There you go. Ship flies by. And the animation is done. Now, obviously, we want to tweak this somewhat. As you can see, the camera is missing a lot of the action here at certain points in the animation, so let's fix that. Uh, if we take it, say, halfway. Now, let's tweak the camera slightly. 
I like it showing that much. There we go. And then we'll check back. And as you can see, about halfway in between again, we're missing most of the action. Let's swing the camera around to catch that. Okay. Let's automatically keyframe that, remember. There we go. Looking much better. Again, at this point, missing a lot of the action. Let's just uh, rotate the camera around to catch that. And we can now see what our animation looks like. There we go. Now, obviously, this changes from a model to a bounding box, just a boundary outline, basically, because of the processing power required to move that many polygons in real time with that many lights. Uh, you need a major, major powerful workstation to do that in real time. So what it does is there is a polygon limit setting. Anything more than that number of polygons, it will turn them into a bounding box. There we go. Now, uh, just for a little added fun, I'll actually move the model slightly. What I'll do is I'll rotate the model. So I'll select my primary layer of the USS Vigilant. Press Y for rotational mode. And let's add a little rotation into the model. Let's say it's banking there. Now you'll notice the keyframe is highlighted. And there are no other keyframes for this model. We've only done keyframes for the camera. It only does it for the selected object. So it will stay banked like that until it reaches the end, until we create another keyframe. So let's create another keyframe for the model now. Let's turn it that way. So we get it banking during the course of the animation. There you go. So now it's got a nice bank to it. Now at any point in this animation we can stop and see what we can see and if we want to check how it actually looks we can press F9 and render out a frame. Now as of the previous tutorial, if we go to camera and then properties, you'll see I've set it to use the global settings. So let's go to render and render globals. And there we are. You can see I've selected 800 by 600. I'm doing my shadows and transparency and reflections and everything you should set. Now up here is something you see I have to change. This sets the first and last keyframe that I want rendered. So this is now a 300 frame animation. Let's set that. Auto frame advance is turned on. We want that so it will go to each frame automatically. We don't have to interfere. And I've turned the preview off. Now the preview is when you render you get the little picture below it showing you what's actually happening. That's just sapping computing power. We don't want that when we're rendering an animation. It could add ages to the animation time. So turn that off. We don't need it. Now, filtering. Obviously, I've got my three-pass filtering on again. I could go more, depending on if it was, I wanted it movie quality or whatever else. Three-pass is fine for now. One thing I will turn on now that we're animating is motion blur. This will make it look much more realistic. It'll add the blur you get when uh, something moves past a camera at speed. You tend not to get it with video cameras, but motion picture cameras, actual film cameras, you get it. So it always helps to turn that on. It just adds that extra zing to your animation, makes it look that bit more real. Now you've got a selection of uh, motion blurs. I like to select photo real. It doesn't make any huge difference to the render time. Uh, turning motion blur on will, but the difference between the three of them is marginal. I've found anyway. So photo real motion blurs turned on. So if I was to render, say, this frame here, where it's at its fastest passing, this will be quite blurred now. But this frame here, further away, a lot less blur. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to render it right now because it could take ages. Uh, it takes several minutes to render a frame of this at this size with all those effects turned on and all those lights. 